Namaskar, Namaskar everyone. Welcome back to another live with an awesome guest. So if you're joining for the first time, welcome to my channel. And you know, if you're, if you don't know what's this channel about, just a quick background. My name is Aditya. I'm an investor, real estate investor and realtor. And on this channel, I talk a lot about uh, financial freedom, how you can achieve financial freedom through real estate, because you know, uh, that's what real estate got me, financial freedom through investing and also through sales. So without too much uh, uh, BS on my side, because that anyways, I'll do every day. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about an awesome guest because, you know, this guy is amazing because whenever I open my Instagram, the first face I see <laughs> is this guy. <laughs> I, I, I've absolutely, I've been obsessively following him for like, like last six, seven months. Um, who is, you know, doing amazing with the sales and also an investor, also like with a humble background like me coming from, as an immigrant from India um, and doing a lot of big things like, you know, have a huge team, real estate team of, you know, 15 agents and doing land developments, investing in real estate um, and educating just like me actually on a higher scale, a lot more pumping content every day on Instagram, TikTok, now on to YouTube. So, you know, there is a lot to learn from this guy. So first of all, Mandeep, thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate for being here. Uh, you know, not only me, my audience is going to enjoy, learn a lot about from you. So thank you. Thank you, Dite. I don't have any words to say now. <laughs> it was such a fabulous introduction and so crisp and clear. This shows your experience on going live. <laughs> Remember, you know, I was just a bit hesitant about going live before. But it's a, I hope it will be a nice experience, you know, interacting with the, your audience, with you and get to know um, about you, me, you know, we'll love to share all of our experiences to everyone yeah. and let them grow, build their wealth uh, and real estate. That is the whole story. That's why we, why we are here. So uh, thank you again. Thanks. Yeah, that's, that's a goal, right? You know, um, one thing, uh, guys, if you're joining, don't hesitate to comment below. What's your name? Where you're joining live from? Because, you know, this live, like Mandit mentioned, is about you, how you can build your portfolio, how we can help you to grow, um, you know, how you can achieve financial freedom using real estate as a vehicle. So please don't hesitate. Any questions you have while, you know, I'm asking, I'm, I'm going to ask Mandip a lot of questions uh, because, you know, you know, I, I feel like he, he's the guy who, who is like my next level. I want, I want to get to that level. So where this is my selfish uh you know interviews that i do where i can learn from guys who are doing it and crushing it at the next level so at the same time you know you get this opportunity very rarely talking to someone who is you know doing bigger things so make sure ask any questions that has been in your mind that is bothering you to take the next step because it could be small question or you know silly questions but don't hesitate to ask because that's the only way you can grow you can have what you want for you and for your family so without any further ado i'll start asking questions and also i will take your questions so don't hesitate to put in while i'm asking mandip my questions so brother without any ado i'm excited to learn more about you because you know we never talked but i've been following yes. previously where i haven't seen any videos about you you know who are you where where do you came from and you know how did you landed into real estate so uh, let's start like once upon a time. <laughs> so yeah. I heard about Canada, like let's start dig deeper into that. So uh, my cousin called me, uh, he explained me there like federal skilled category program opened in Canada. It's in very new and it's an opportunity for me. What like I'm more of an action taker person. I heard mm -hmm. and I like at that time, it's I believed that story. When was the this? action? Uh, it was uh, way back. <laughs> I'll, I'll come back to that, right? So it's all secret now. So okay. it's, it's uh, so uh, uh, so. Then I took an action uh, within I think uh, nine months. We landed mm -hmm. here. Uh, it's it's always everybody is very ambitious. Um, uh, it's like a dream country for so many people because social media was not that popular at that time. Yeah. But still, mm -hmm. I would say Facebook. Uh, I started from Orkut at that time. I don't know if you remember or not. So like we used to see yep, people, uh, other people. Yeah, <laughs> we used to see uh, people's pictures, you know, videos. It was motivating. You no, know? it's like a different dreamland coming from India. And yeah. then um, definitely, uh, when we came, it's a lot of. Uh, we came with a baggage with a lot of dreams uh, in mind. Uh, when we landed here, we took a like around thirteen thousand debt. 
because you have to wow. prove uh, to immigration now that like, yeah, you can yeah, qualify, yeah. you can sustain mm-hmm. here. Yeah. And it's all, I would say my excitement faded like around uh, within uh, one week. Uh, mm-hmm. Because uh, it's when you are a new immigrant here, what I struggled with is everybody asks, like, you don't have any experience. You don't yeah. have any Canadian yeah. experience. It's okay, yeah. you have Indian experience, but you don't have any relevant experience, no, though, yeah. even though you are more qualified. That's what I struggled with. So I started with, I remember the first job I took like was working in a night shift. It's very close to our wow, office. Yeah. If you visit our office, it's just backside of it. Now we have more than 5,000 square foot office close to that. So I still remember that uh, beginning. It was a night shift. I walked to that and I was excited to get that $50. And I was converting to Indian currency. I like, oh man, wow. that's like, it's a good... <laughs> no, it's everybody's dream. When you're new, new yeah. here, you always try to convert everything. Yeah, and, especially uh, the first two years. <laughs> That's yeah. So even like uh, French vanilla was a luxury for us. Like, um, oh man, it's very cheap. Like a one dollar or something, you can have that. Like coffee was a luxury. So this is all started, and then I went, uh, worked in factories. You know, it's funny you mentioned French vanilla. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. I think most of the Indians who come, you know, in the first year, they're gonna have that ninety percent of the people. And I used to have. <laughs> you start from the chocolate, hot chocolate, and then you move to French vanilla. After some time, you're done. Okay, man, it's too much sugar. It's not for us. It's, so that's, <laughs> Sorry that's, to interview. Uh, that, that's, yeah. that's a good reminder, you know, where we yeah, came so, from. Yeah, so this, this is, I think it's everyone's uh, story, each of one of us when we start. This is all, yeah. it's a humble beginning for us. And then you struggle. Initial days, I remember I was working 12-hour shift and wearing those heavy uh, shoes and uh, uh, it's like I was working in a nut factory, you know, they want to retain me. After two weeks, I just changed it. I think it's not for me. On weekends, I used to work in restaurants and uh, cl- cleaning the mob and all those things. And I remember one of the restaurants which I was working with, those guys even not didn't pay me also. They said, okay, you're not qualified to like clean those utensils. Oh my God, that's that's wow. uh, the reason <laughs> they get it. That's when I you know, like, uh, do you really need a qualification to clean? <laughs> Don't I just need hands? <laughs> Yes, that's, and uh, I, I remember in the night I used to uh, clean toilets. I was like uh, cleaning uh, restaurants. We had even a child care uh, where we used to work in the night. So it's like a s- small beginning when you start with, the only thing which helped me was like, uh, uh, we had a background in farming. So in the farming, mm-hmm. they tell uh, the land is your mother. Yeah. So you always love your, whatever investment you are doing, everything should go towards the land. So that was a, a motivation for us, like uh, us, so I would say my family, right? So me and my wife actually landed here. So it was mm-hmm. a motivation for us. Uh, so our focus was to have some sort of a piece of land, but the land doesn't work here, actually. Yeah. So you know that, right? Raw land yeah. is not a value here. It's not, no, you can have a crop here and you can go rich or whatever, like have a good lifestyle, I would say. That's not a possibility. The thing you have to do is you have to add value into that. So then yeah. I came to know about the real estate part of it. I thought, okay, there's a, there's a lot of uh, potential in real estate. And uh, somebody, it's, it's, you always talk about mentorship. So mentorship yeah. was really important. When I like came here, I met one of the gentlemen. He was here from last 30, 40 years. He was an accountant basically in, in his 80s. So he advised me one thing. Uh, he said like, you know, whatever you can do, just buy a small piece of a house, whatever. It, what is a mm-hmm. crap? In Hindi, they, he called me literally like a chuggi, right? Like that's a word. I'm not sure that's a Punjabi word or Hindi, right? Just walk just buy anything you can within yeah. your budget or means right and i took mm. that advice that's what i i told you right i'm action taker if somebody yeah, told yeah. me i'm there to jump and just experiment and luckily i bought two properties mm-hmm. and uh, I, and he told me don't take any debt no car loans no uh, any credit loans i was able to i know it i was able to qualify i was staying in the basement i was renting my properties so because it basement That's a rent very was, good mentor, honestly, because a lot of people go into debt right away because it's yes. tiny, like get, you can easily get a nice car here. <laughs> and I have seen a lot of my that. friends, BMW, Mercedes, you know, all different nice cars, but that's a good mentorship. I love that. Sorry. Yeah, I guess so. You know, that's that's the whole it started. Actually, now coming to your cars point, I believe you can buy those cars. We always talk about liabilities yeah. any time of your life and nobody can reject your loan. They'll say, okay, come to us. We'll give you five, six yeah. percent. It's okay because it's, it's their business, but having your own investment or your own home is the biggest achievement I would say in Canada. So I was yeah. really excited. I called my parents. Okay. I got my first home in Canada. So see, it's, it's your feelings. So emotions, yeah. those little things matters. Now they were excited to come to Canada even. So those are do those things matters. I can, I think everyone watching this, they can relate to it. It's, it's a, it's a, it's like 
happiness uh, the way the, the day you get married the same type of happiness you have when you have your yeah. own home in canada Yep. So this is what I started and I'm so blessed. I took that advice and those two properties made me millions. That's what I would say millions because it's, if it's you okay. don't mind me asking, like, when was this, when did you got started into real estate? Like when did you As, got your first property? First property is was 15, 2015. So uh, I, can you elaborate a little bit more on, you know, what type of property is it? Why did you buy that chose to buy that property? Yes. So it's it's okay. So at that time, what was, I was not that educated on the real estate part that I can make um, a decision. I was aware of duplex, no, mm -hmm. that I can yeah. have cash flow appreciation. I bought it for, to live into that. That was yeah. the first mm -hmm. decision. And the only thing, only reason I was like, I have to buy a property where I don't have anybody on the, my back. So I wanted to mm -hmm. have a ravine property, a ravine lot. Got it. And mm -hmm. uh, so that was a plus for me because when we sold it out, these are very rare properties to find wow. with the ravine, nobody on backing or it, it was like my ambition, but it helped me double. And we had, fortunately, we were having a walkout basement with it. So when okay. you walk out basement, it's again a plus. So it's like yeah. those properties appreciate more irrespective of the uh, uh, value of whatever market conditions. And I'm assuming this is in GTA area. Yes, yes, yeah. GTA, right? And yeah. now this is your second question. Uh, the second property, it was not in GTA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we, we moved to Vancouver. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so you went all the way from Toronto to Vancouver. Yes. Yeah. So it was like East and West. So we had properties in both. So that's why we was always living in the basement. Still, we own two properties. Mm. So that's, that's, uh, uh, that's, this is how. So, but uh, uh, this is how it started. Those two properties, what I, happened to me was, I was able to add values, fortunately, mm -hmm. or whatever, like uh, I was able to add the legal suite into them. Okay. And because legal suites were, they, they were not in trend. Now, right now, everybody mm -hmm. talks about legal suite. Yeah. Because prop, I think from maybe in Windsor also, you must notice it's from last two, three years, people are talking yeah, about. Pretty it. much like, uh, you know, honestly, yeah. like me and my friends, we started about legal suites, talking, highlighting them. But before that, maybe hardly very few knowledgeable investors who kept for themselves. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's all. So we, we, we sold it and the basement we had, it was having four bedrooms and mm -hmm. it was having two full washrooms. We basically wow. intentionally created two units into that. It was a legal one, but at least wow. you have potential for second that, that like that property, that's, that's the, I would say force appreciation. It happens. So that's what yeah. we educate uh, to people uh, right now. So a lot of I think it's, you know, I want to hold you there because a lot of, if, if someone is watching this new, here, here there's so many things you can learn in a bigger city doesn't matter which city you're in you can buy some cash flowing like you can add value you can you have those additional units and how much was the rent you're getting from those two units so rent was uh, for those uh, two units i would say upstairs was not uh, that good because um, i'll come back to that what was the reason for that it was around 2600 mm -hmm. and okay. uh, uh, downstairs was around 1500 so, so still you're like 4,000. Wow. Yeah. So it was good. Uh, it was a, a legal suite overall. Mm -hmm. But here I, I'm just going a bit off track. Um, the properties sure. were good. Those The same unit would could have been rented higher. Mm. But it's about, uh, I didn't do much of my due diligence in finding the right person to rent those property to. Uh, definitely yeah. I was good. I like I hired a property management company, but that mm -hmm. company was not that much qualified and good enough. Uh, because every time something happens, they were charging double to me and I was not aware yeah. of it. So that's, that's a problem for everyone. And that property could have been rented to better tenants because we had issues. Uh, we like at one time we planned, okay, we move, want to move back to our own home. That's like, mm -hmm. let's move on. But we were not able to move out, uh, move in because those tenants were not good. They were paying on time, but they, they were not willing to vacate that property. Yeah. That's, so, you know, we as investors, that that's a common problem we, we have. I think every one of us go through that challenge once or at least once or twice in a career. I think yes, it's a yeah. learning stepping stone. So, yeah. you know, fast forward, like how did you get into sales and, you know, the social media? That's what yes. I'm excited about. <laughs> so again, this is again, uh, once upon a time, it, that time was two years back. I heard okay. about that short, short time video, short forms of videos are getting popular. So you got into sales like just two years ago? At sales, I would say, yeah, even around, I started, I got licensed in September of, uh, I actually, I was the first batch of Humber College. Oh, to wow. Be passed out, so but, that's and, like literally two, two and a half years ago. Yes. That's Humber, all. not even Oriya. Like I, I was with the Oriya. Yeah. So I just. Wow, I, man. Okay. Hold on. That blows my mind. So that means you're completely still 
way newer into the game it's just yes. two and a half years ago yeah so it's, uh, <laughs> and the, the point was because i was working for myself so that mm-hmm. helped me because i, I had a investor uh, investment background okay so because once i started into those properties i learned from my mistakes and uh, we started investing outside of gta because affordability was a problem uh, mm-hmm. so i remember we started with london property uh, market it was like 5 years around that 5 years mark and this mm-hmm. property prices was around you know 150 200 mark we were getting yeah, decent yeah. decent duplex which were cash flowing like i would say 4000 rent and the mortgage is around 1000 so yeah so it's so, like 2000 cash flow <laughs> yeah so it was uh, that 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 helped us actually so i was doing hands on on those properties i was doing mm-hmm. paint you no know, all those renovations that helped us to scale so it helped me in my sales business now mm-hmm. let me go back into that how i entered in the sales so sales yeah, is like basically because you're doing well on the investing side <laughs> so that that investment thing helped me but because when you're an investor you need good investor focused real estate agent obviously yeah. then only you can grab those deals and you are the first one to be contacted when the deals comes into picture or like you know in and out uh, because you rely on yeah. investor uh, real estate agent but when i was working with the real estate agents it's my story i'm not sure what about other people i was working across different markets so we were in london we were in kitchener so my experience with real estate agents were not good so they uh, i don't want to say anything bad about it like i'm also a real estate agent but the experience was like they say something they do something different altogether yeah. mm-hmm. it's more mm-hmm. of a promises thing and where you don't deliver to those promises and then when yeah. you work when you work like this with an investor i think that's a problem here because invest investor need a long term relationship it's all uh, built on that trust and the confidence level Yeah. then i thought okay these people are not uh, worthy for me i can do better than me than them for me so that's what i started about uh, this real estate i thought okay i won't, don't want to work with anyone uh, i'm good with what i'm doing i want to buy my own property sell it flip it what i want to do add value into that and move on mm-hmm. but when you start that's this is how i got licensed and then when i started doing it my friends and all those people they started contacting me you're doing good like we, you're very new to this and then how come you are able to scale so much because i had yeah. those backgrounds already set up i know how mm-hmm. to work with an investor because i had those problems they need that quality of service they need the contractor relationship they need the property yeah. management they need good tenants it's not about like one time deal that is like te- property is sold out and then you moved out as a real estate agent man so you're I, talking my language <laughs> yeah so i i had because we we went through that phase yeah. so i know that what is a problem because when you are adding value to somebody like it's everybody had the money as money is yeah. not a problem it's about what value you are adding to the people's life then uh, uh, i started like doing helping my friends okay you know i'll help you out but when you help someone and you go beyond and above it's obviously you'll get four to five referrals it's like yeah. i think it's a gold nugget for everyone don't like you don't need 100 or 1000 of uh, your investors or uh, clients like first time home buyers whatever you just need 10 loyal people like, who's yeah. going to refer you 40 and that chain continues yeah you know, that, that's so true like even when i was i started as an investor first just like you right um mm-hmm. my first like before i got my license all my deals like or with only one realtor because she did it exceptionally well she, yes, i was yeah. completely happy uh, mm-hmm. i got into license because for a different reason but uh, i was completely happy and all my transactions were with only her mm-hmm. so it was like you know if i had one client could do like four or five transactions in one two years then there is like you know if i need i just need like 10 of them who yes. can do those kind of transactions that i love that so it's not like you know transactional base relationship base mm-hmm. that's what yes, you're doing is. if my understanding is. and yes, that's yeah. the solid like comp that's the style of business will compound very quickly definitely definitely that's uh, that helped us actually scale on real estate and at at one time we, i was basically out of business in the sense i was not able to help my clients yeah they wanted to work with me and i was not available it's like they want to you know see london kitchener you know mississauga brampton they want to go to whitby you know peter all those wow, areas so and just was, like <laughs> going around so i remember like it was one time like i was not able to see my son like he just uh, go to school and whatever i was just seeing him sleeping that's it so then i thought it's not a more of a scalability yeah. model it's it's, mm-hmm. it's uh, just a uh, you work you go do the deal you're not able to scale you don't have that lifestyle and the leverage you have yeah and that's that's how i, I thought about uh, uh, having a team where team, i can yeah. help other mm-hmm. other real estate agents 
and then i can pass on my work to them and definitely i can educate them they mm-hmm. can provide that professional service to those clients that's what we are i always tell them it's not about uh, it's not about how much money you are making out about it even you are doing a lease it's what service you are providing to them because that lease yeah. will take convert them into buying that selling so it's like a lifetime relationship so yeah. that's that, that this is uh, how i started into a team right it's okay i'm not getting off track. no 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 that i'll pause here right <laughs> yeah no that that trust me i'm enjoying the story because i don't know how much how many of you following this uh, uh, honestly i can resonate to you so much uh, but i can see you're on steroids I, I, you know <laughs> because you know just going from 2 years where you are from you know where you are right now with the team and you know all those things like and the social media right like that's a huge part i want to get mm-hmm. in there before there let's take some questions here because yes. a lot of people have questions here so let's start from uh, ravinder here how do i buy my fifth home <laughs> so maybe you can answer this question because you you have multiple properties so no, that's a uh, good question i think there's no limit how many uh, homes you can buy as of uh, the first thing is uh, if somebody have to lend you money i think that's the best part when you like have it first property done that's your home when you go to second third that is when your real investment starts into a, a picture right so thing yeah. is that every lender is going to look into your affordability part right so how yeah. much you can afford are you able to pay that mortgage if like even you don't uh, uh, based on your previous history that is called your credit history this means you have four properties this means you are already doing good so what will happen is those properties if it's even though they are cash flowing or whatever you can easily offset your debts based on how much you are making out of it even it's let's say even uh, scotia they can go up to you know a portfolio of 4 million for example for five properties you can definitely go to another bank let's say cibc or national bank try them and show your portfolio even the portfolio grows up to that level you can consolidate into one of the holding company and use you can move towards the commercial side of it so yeah. i think it's 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 all about the what i felt is is buying your first property that's your home and yeah. buying your the first investment that is a biggest hurdle you will have if yeah. you have a right team right uh, network you can uh, it's there is like sky is a limit uh, yeah. so that's what that's what i would say here you nailed it i i don't have anything to add to it that that's it like having the right team and also like you know like you said uh, going from one lender to another lender uh, that's yes. exactly what i did first i was maxed out like i had four properties with rbc yes. and yes. they said like no for fifth or sixth property yes. then i had to find cibc cibc said okay we'll lend you six with us no matter what you have with other lenders if you have 100000 in saving or yes. stocks yeah so, so they have those lender, options yeah yeah every lender have a different policy so Criteria, definitely yeah. there are many lenders out there who will lend you yeah love it so let's go for some more questions here um arsh arriving in gta in july heard it takes 2 years to get your first home has per it return proof is it true so you are the gta expert so ha uh, and i would so the uh, easy answer is no so there's nothing nobody can stop you as aditya was mentioning every bank has their own criteria we have worked with the clients where they have bought their homes within 3 to 6 months after landing in canada because yeah. let's say banks have the program where they have a new immigrants plans if you are landing new you have a job you are uh, you have starting with your credit building uh, they they'll definitely approve your uh, 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 basically the mortgage there is no issues with that Hmm. so i think that's that's a, somebody told you a wrong information on that maybe i'll think, add another yeah. question to it yeah. um, are you on permanent residency or work yes, permit yes definitely yeah that's so it. what what if you're on work permit yes yeah, so the work permit obviously you know what happened on 30th yeah. of march so you are already uh, out of ontario's market yeah. and uh, so you cannot qualify you can qualify obviously but you have to pay 20% uh, tax maybe uh, pre construction how about the pre construction solution for someone you know um who is uh, coming on work permit but they know yes. that they're going to get their work permit in pr in 2 years or definitely three. that's that's a uh, another a smart way of i would uh, say doing it and in today's market we had offers where the builders we had a deal done where we are just doing 5% uh, down payment so i think yeah. that's a uh, that's a good deal for them somebody who want to enter and the closing in let's say 5 years down the line irrespective of the market whatever market conditions you are it's going to go up and your conditions will improve maybe you are on work permit your status maybe you are on pr or you have more savings so it's, i think that's that's a good point to add here aditya yeah yeah love that um so here hey i'm uh, shobrar 
Oh, sorry, I cannot pronounce this. From Ludhiana, Punjab. I don't know, maybe close to your neighbor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so after my 12th grade in India, can I come, come up to Canada for real estate course? And can I get the license in my work permit? I mean, before my PR. Um, yeah, I, I, um, yeah I, I believe yes, because my cousin, he's on work permit right now, and he got his license in Ontario. Uh, unless if you have anything to add. Uh, maybe one thing I don't know is uh, he's asking if he can come to Canada with the real estate course. So that's an interesting thing, actually. I haven't uh, um, uh, looked into that scope. Maybe yeah. graduation, I think they need. I the don't minimum. think so, because I yeah. don't think he can get study permit because it's not like a two years course or yes, to get work year. permit. Probably, I think your, uh, bra, your best bet is to get a two years course, whatever the course that related to your field, what you're currently in get your study visa and then once you finish your studies then get your real estate license because real estate is only like three four months course so I, uh, you won't get work visa because you need the work visa if you're getting the study visa is not what matters so getting the work visa and then getting pr is what you're looking for right so get the work visa and when you're on work permit sure you can you can get the license and you can work if it's an open work permit so if you're going through the studies you'll get the open work permit Dipet, do you have any other subsidiary on immigration? It looks like. No, 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 no. Because you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, Study I, visa, I, work visa. <laughs> because I'm, I, I came as a student. That's why. Yes, I yeah. I, 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 I'm as a student, and so many people right now. I'm, work, I'm trying to get my sister here. Okay. Um, and and I we tried a work visa, didn't happen. Now we are trying study visa. So that's why I know a lot of things. Uh, but okay. no. <laughs> but if someone is an immigrant who wants to partner up with me, <laughs> I'm open. Yeah, that's what. How quickly I can get PR in Canada? <laughs> that is yeah. my next question. <laughs> we can do some marketing in that area. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's a good one. Uh, can you describe steps how a person could should enter into real estate? I'm a student who wants to do MS in Canada, then I enter into real estate. Maybe I will let you answer on this. How should someone enter into real estate? See, I, I always say uh, when you enter into real estate, the first thing is forget about education, affordability, approvals, and all those things. The first thing is you need to have that mindset. You need to have a growth mindset, and you need to understand the Canadian economy. Canadian economy is driven by real estate. So because if one real estate transaction happens, it brings food on table of I think more than 100 people you need to understand yeah. even the city getting paid from land transfer tax city pays those you know, notary guys the lawyer is getting paid mortgage agents are real estate agents inspectors appraisals contractors you know home insurance so many factors involved so if the first the thing is it's okay you you want to buy I would suggest you it's okay whatever you're doing investment dream of your first home it will be your prime residence because if you talk to anybody who landed in Canada, half of their pay is going into what? Paying rent. Yeah. That's 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 no way. They, they, they are not able to scale because 2000 they are paying a rent. Yesterday, I like one guy, is, he is new here. I, no, not new, actually. He, is, he came four years back, but he came to me like he want to buy his first home. Then I explained to him he's paying 2000 rent. And he have been here from last four years. 2000 means $24,000 per year. And if you multiply by four, this is more than 100,000. Have already paid at a rent. And he's already have the saving, but he's not taking the action. So that's yeah. that's a big, big problem. A lot of people, I, I think, that they're like the people who are on the live chat or people will see this video, they have the money, they have the right uh, 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 environment but they're not taking the action it's about their mindset yeah. they're always like listening to their aunts and uncle who came 30 40 years back and then they themselves have four or five properties and they take advice from them the, who is going to educate them oh no no market is too high don't buy now it's going to crash so yeah. that even so if that's negativity or everywhere even the media is pushing that into people's mind yeah so you you know that it's mm -hmm. the right time to buy and irrespective whether you are on high or low when you are buying your home, you are not paying for somebody else's rent. You are paying towards your down payment or like the mortgage payment are going for you. Like you're decreasing it day by day, irrespective yep. whether you have any appreciation, cash flow, forget about those investment terminologies. You need to understand the basics. This is yep. your biggest investment. You are put, putting money every month towards reducing your debts. So that's the biggest thing. It's I would say it's it's action is a problem. It's not about any type of qualification. You need the right team, right mindset, right attitude, and network to excel in real estate. Yeah. 
I hope yeah. it answered that question. No, I love that advice. I know, honestly, yeah, yeah. I agree with you thousand percent. Um, you know, again, every market provide opportunities. Yes, and, it is. And also, like if you know, if you, you um, like you mentioned earlier, the creative solutions. You 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 found your first property with value adding. You yes. you improved the property, added a unit. You can do that over the time, so you're increasing your property value as well. And you you have some extra income too. If you are yes. renting your basement, you have another unit yes. or two units. So now maybe you can even reduce your rent, your expense, but also by owning it. And at the end, in a long term, that doesn't matter. Like you, we all know, over a period of five, ten, twenty years, exactly. You yes. know, even if the market doesn't go up, at least your mortgage got paid down in yes, twenty so, years. So, and you are paying for your own property. You're not paying for someone exactly. else's property. Yeah. So that's it. yeah, love that. It's 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 all mindset. I I agree thousand percent. And uh, you know, a uh, couple of your fans say you know, best realtor Mandeep and uh, <laughs> Mandeep is a gem person. I always have the best advice. And I agree. You know, best advice and honest advice. That's that's very important. And that's why I wanted to have you on the channel. I've been asking you for a while thank now. Thank you, thank you, Richard. thanks a lot. I was a bit yeah. hesitant, I know, right? I haven't done any live, and yeah, I, I told you before also. So, I, no, it's, it's so far it's good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, at the end, you know, uh, it's a common community. A lot of our people who are, you know, most of the people who are watching this are, you know, immigrants like us. Yes, you know, yes. And you know, not like you mentioned, they are getting advice from their uncle and all these things. But they're not getting advice from the people who are actually who are doing and doing very really well. Yes, you know, that's yes. exactly why I want to have this conversation. And that's exactly if you're watching this, any questions like, you know, like our friend just asked, ask any questions you have. Let us know in the comments. We'll do our best to, you know, respond to all of them. Uh, moving on to the next question here. What do you think the real estate market will uh, bottom based on previous corrections? Yeah. So, you know, I'll, I'll just add to that because you're in gta market right so what do you think going on in gta market and what 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 do you, what's your projections so i would say nobody can time the market it's mm -hmm. like you can't say i bought at the exact dip and then i like sold at the exact peak you never know when you have the at the bottom you don't know when you are at the top you realize it when the property started going up now yeah. the, what what you need to understand is even you are like an investor or your first time home buyer real estate is a buy and hold and it's a long term game so if you have to see the projections what was happening irrespective we know what happened last two years it was unprecedented time nobody thought like covid will came like or there will be a lot of printing of the money government will give loan to people like and their prices will go up interest rates will be a historical low that was not the market how it was in even canada the flat rate is like nine ten percent appreciation based on the inflation that's that's how it happens even right now if you say you need to uh, uh even the market there is a correction what prices in gta market if you see like a semi detached which was like selling even for 1.6 lot of news were happening like one point right 1.4 or 1.3 they are around what 1.1 million still mm -hmm. they are up from last year if, yeah so square footage you need to calculate the square foot price if it was 750 per square feet like it's now 650 now okay and you need to see uh, like so like give or take a 20 percent drop in the market yes so that that's that's there right it's a, it's a correction and i would say that is good for the economy yeah. Uh, in the long run, because a lot of people were not able to afford and people were getting crazy. They're fine putting 40 offers on a property, which even they can't afford it. They're just yeah. buying in that uh, craziness, in that uh, emotion, a dilemma. That's that's not a good sign in the long term for any economy. If somebody goes like this, it's definitely going to fall. If you're like, uh, you know, running on your stairs, you're taking two steps at a time. You It's going to hurt your knees. You're, you might fall down. The same happens to the real estate. It's yeah. like a slow and steady growth is okay. So now that's what is happening. It's uh, what I feel is it this uh, curve is going to flatten out. The reason being the construction cost is not coming down. You need to understand mm -hmm. it. Call any any of the contractors nearby. They'll tell you there is again a shortage of material that they'll sell you. And the Home Depot prices are already 2x, whatever. Like when you go to the general yeah. stores of uh, material, you'll see that. So that, that you need to understand when the new builds are coming in the market, the prices are still intact. The reason being builders, uh, because we build ourselves, we know that we cannot reduce the price. The, it's still at, at that level because uh, uh, the pay package of the uh, contracts are not coming down. Material is not coming down. And the approval process is still still take five years. Yeah. And the development charges are still at 200, 300 thousands, which goes to the government. How come it can they can reduce that money? 
so there's no way these things can come down definitely in the correction might will be there because you can see the inflation is already 7% so that's the reason because government is now in a panic mode they were not in a panic mode when they were printing money and distributing yeah. to the people they have to have a long term vision so it's this 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 uh, i would say it's not uh, it's it, at one time it's going to stabilize and it depends on your scenario to your question what was like how the real estate market depends are you buying the property or you are selling it and and i would say good things happens slowly right so you need to be patient what what you are trying to achieve and do uh, uh, with a real estate like right now are you buying it or selling that should be the uh, our question on that then we can suggest which which way it should go right yeah 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 makes sense and you know for for someone like you know a common question i used to get like especially like sandeep who is asking will the market bottom base or based on the correction like right now um I will just add on to it. like you know if if there are first time home buyers, um, they've been waiting for a while now. Yes. They want to buy a house, uh, but now they're scared because you know they they're seeing that the interest rates are going up. So what is your advice for someone like that? Definitely. So I would say you need to consider end of the day if. Uh, interest and the price have the inverse relationship you know that right yeah. so interest rates goes up obviously prices are going to impact because it's all about the affordability even the half percent increase is there if you try to calculate the prices will depreciate based on that end of the day your mortgage will always be the same what yeah. is coming out of your pocket as a first time home buyers will be same so that is, i would say that is an opportunity for you to capitalize that because now obviously your down payment will decrease if like the you are buying to you are planning to buy a million dollar property in gta i'm just taking a reference mm -hmm. if the same property you are getting for 800000 this means if you are doing 10% down you are already paying 80000 it's not 100000 you are already saving on that down payment it's yeah. an opportunity for you and somebody let's say i just want to add on here somebody who wants to upgrade here i would say it's a great opportunity because if they are selling a town home if mm -hmm. the town it's let's say there's a five percent uh, hypothetical correction on a property yeah. prices mm -hmm. they sold their uh, town home for eight hundred thousand five percent means there's a forty thousand less yeah. but they're mm -hmm. buying a detached home detached homes like let's for example it's a million dollar like it's not a million yeah. but that's a hypothetical it's a five percent this means fifty thousand so the, here they what they they sold the property forty thousand less and they bought a property fifty thousand less so you need to yeah. understand the math like there's a 10000 gap already for you it's, a, it's it's direct you're not paying out of your pocket you're saving in the long run so it's it's an option for you when you're planning to upgrade yourself also so th that's what i would say here yeah i love that i so true again you know at the end uh, what's your end goal right like you know and, and at that moment if every, all the ducks are in your row and this is the time where you can bargain some prices too yes, on yes, top of the values yeah. that's another good opportunity because you know all these years we've been waiting to bargain and now the bargain <laughs> is here and now you're waiting to see yeah, what's yeah, yeah, in the next two months three months because we don't know what's going to happen down the road i mean you know the projections is like the interest rates can go up for another yes. further one person Definitely. two person mm -hmm. and that means you know the prices can go down further but like you mentioned you know we don't know how far they can go down at okay. least right now if you can negotiate bargain a good price and you if you can get a, the actually the right property that you've been looking for because all these years you don't have no option you're just literally buying buying yeah. what you know what you can get but now you can actually get what you want so it's mm -hmm. a very different uh, timing um, I love the question. So uh, moving on to another question that I want to ask before I go continue, because there is more questions, a lot of questions here. <laughs> so That's good. before I get to those questions, um, so how did you get into the social media? So that's a good thing, right? So uh, I heard about that. So what I was uh, talking before, I heard about that. So uh, short term, uh, short form of videos are getting popular. Mm -hmm. At that time, TikTok was coming up and um, I thought, okay, why not try that platform? I was like, uh, it was around like in the night, right? My son was sleeping. I was going through it. They said like TikTok is really getting popular. And I voted it. I I had one video where we were planning to buy some car. I had that video. I just had in my phone, right? I just uploaded it like that. Oh, just, so I just, added, the yeah, night. I just yeah, so that's it. I just added a background music and then I just, okay, that's less up to it. And then it got viewership, right? 
I thought, okay, that's interesting. A lot of people are watching it. And then when you see some results so quick, right? Yeah, so yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a motivating for you. Why not? Uh, let me try. Because like YouTube, it takes time. You know, it's, you yeah. establish slowly. Once you go, I think uh, the 500 or 1000 mark, it just uh, compound. But yeah. initially it takes time. I was very excited when I had like 100 followers on YouTube, right? So, oh my God, 100, right? So now <laughs> this, this platform there work differently because what is happening right now then and then after that, I started posting regularly. I was posting what I realized that people need uh, education plus entertainment. Yeah. So they they, they want to uh, they want uh, like three, four, five seconds because they are busy in the work and they are always scrolling like this. Mm. So they need something. Most of the people are spending you no know, two to three hours of their work or the time on the phone, even the work, they just scroll. So that's what it, I thought like that's an opportunity. I thought like let let me mix my education style. I want to educate everyone how they can invest, buy or like do renovation or land, whatever, and add a flavor of entertainment and like a good mm. music. This is this is how it started and then when tiktok was doing good let let me focus on instagram we went on that so i think that's like the now it's a story i never thought i'll have more than uh, 100,000 followers on TikTok or even on Instagram. Like, 50, uh, man, you're, you're so consistent. Like, I cannot keep up with you. I see that you get like one post a day. Yes, yeah. So, what happened? We used to do two posts a day before. Wow. I think last uh, two, three months we reduced it because uh, uh, we are focused more on YouTube now. We okay. recently started creating more YouTube content, right? Mm -hmm. So, let's, I thought, like, let's to be, you know, global because uh, what I felt is from experience, um, People come from different platforms. Somebody was telling, I saw your video on LinkedIn and was I, I was <laughs> like motivated to know uh, know what you do and then let's buy the home, right? Oh my God. Yeah. I thought LinkedIn is working too, right? So that's, you never know which which way the thing uh, can happen. So that, that's yeah. all. So we want to be consistent on all those platforms and I enjoy it actually. It's um, So, you know, my, my question to you, this is like my personal challenge, right? How do you come up with this content? So it, it's, it's it's very natural to me, actually. That's what I feel. Some but some people are born talented. I won't say touch wood, right? So <laughs> what, what happened in, I think, in um, when the YouTube was coming up, uh, at that time, I asked one of my friend, right? I want to, edu I, my mindset more of a uh, teaching, right? I would say ed educating yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So I like, you know, pe people are there. I tell them this is a new, they feel, oh, wow. And then what he told me that the YouTube is coming up at that time. That YouTube is some new technology coming up. Why don't you want to try that? What I did at that time, I you know Google it out something. I had my screen recorder, and then mm -hmm. I created a couple of educating videos. Uh, it was way back, I think uh, 2008 or 9 something like that. Mm -hmm. So and I learned from them. And then what I did after that, I created a funny video channel on okay. YouTube. So some people, I'm not sure it's digged somewhere, right? And YouTube, if you try to Google, I'm not sure. So I, I tried to create you know funny videos or just uh, some. Uh, I'm not entertainment stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. it was just for my passion. I said, like, wherever I'm going, I'll just create something. And then I was editing myself. What I learned from that, that helped me in my uh, social media platform here. Because mm. uh, those, I had those experiences, that background. So I can think more of a director mindset that helped me. So uh, definitely, and right now I'm not editing my videos because it's like too much work for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm more focused on the production side of it. And those ideas are very natural to me. Whenever I'm talking to you or when I see some actions happening around me, I can, mm -hmm. uh, from there I can relate because right now I was at a, one of our construction site and I saw, okay, those sewer lines was getting, you know, I thought like why normal people don't know where the storm water goes. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't know about it. Like, let me enter. I went like, you know, I think 10 feet deep. I know looked into that. I created a video out of it. I think that got two hundred or something, three hundred. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, oh my God, that's this, this, this is how it happens, right? So, no, no, I, I, I love that because you know, um, you, you took the opportunity and also you, you went all in. You're doing completely like you know. So, like other than the social media, the organic stuff. Do you do any paid uh, versions like Facebook or different like Facebook ads or Google ads? Anything else for your business? We haven't tried much because what we felt is a lot of our uh, stuff is happening organically. Mm. So the people, they start liking you, they build that trust and that they, they know that uh, the, this guy can deliver us with the confidence and he is the person to work with. So that's yep. what even uh, uh, that's that's working. I tried once like a Facebook ad. We had like 33 leads and none of them got converted. Yes. Oh yeah. my God. That's You're like $100. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's more relatability, right? Like you know, for for, for I don't know you personally, but I I I can I can feel you. Like you know, I know you from a while. 
<laughs> and I get yeah. the same comments. I am I'm, I'm sure you get the same comments from a lot of people, right? Because mm-hmm. you're, in, you're in front of their face. Like if if the, if I open my phone, I bet you you'll be there. <laughs> so, so again, yeah. that's a consistency and you know being educating, entertaining, and also professional. Yes, so that's that helped her actually. That's what we are educating our team also, how to be good on social media platform. Definitely, it's not a one day thing. It took mm-hmm. us uh, two years to be at that level, and we are still improvising. We are just trying to improvise our quality. If you see our previous videos, it was done on phone, whatever. Now we are yeah. just doing on camera. So it it takes time, and uh, definitely, I would say if somebody have to start, forget about uh, quality. People say quality, it's okay. I would say focus on quantity. Let yeah. have those things because as you grow in your experience, it's again like did they remember doing our first deal, real estate deal? Yeah. Like we were like worried, you know, sweating and all those things. And <laughs> now I'm the right thing. <laughs> yeah, whatever, right? So it's like it, like I'm not sure about venture. We had like million dollars deals here. So yeah, like somebody it was hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so it's it's okay for your deal, but if you're uh, helping someone else, like I, what I felt is I'm not. Uh, that due dil- I'm not that doing that much due diligence on my own deals. I'm doing yeah. more extra due diligence on other people because they trusted you with their million dollar and the yeah. largest investment of their life. You cannot go wrong here. So you yeah. need to take extra caution. So I remember like doing that deal. So it's a consistently basically doing first yeah. video. Now I can see I did my first live. Definitely would love to do more. And this this is how it ha- happens. It's all yeah. about taking your first action. Somebody, yeah. sometimes you take that action, somebody is pushing you or somebody asking you and you just say yes. And it just happens. It just went with the flow. This is what his life is actually. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, for someone who is starting like completely new, a realtor, want to get into the social media, what would you, idea, what, what is your one word advice for them? Uh, as we already talked, consistency. And uh, I would say, uh, just uh, keep your camera in front of you and just record 10 videos. I know your 10th video will be the best. Hmm. And it's, it's and then start posting that regularly. Forget about what people are saying. I know word is full of those 95% negative people. Uh, I always tell like the uh, the social media, the people who come to me that they are like a crab, right? You know, right? If you go to Chinese yeah. store, they have yeah. the crabs in their uh, bucket and then <laughs> they have 10 crabs and yeah. they those crabs have big legs they can easily come out of that bucket but yeah. when one crab start to uh, crawl the other crab pulls his leg that is the biggest problem with uh, i'm not sure it's uh, with everyone a lot of people will try yeah. to pull you down forget about that what people are saying about you it's about your life i don't care what others are saying about it yeah. if you like it you love it just go for it Nobody yeah, you know, stop you. Uh, that's so true. I, I yeah. agree with you a thousand percent because, you know, the crab concept, it's actually even the people who are pulling you back, they don't know it. They're not doing consciously. They're doing <laughs> subconsciously without knowingly. You know, that includes even our own parents, right? Mm-hmm. You know, my mom and dad sometimes says, why are you so mad about making this much money? Yeah, why do you so many properties, money? you know, why? Yeah, why do you want to still <laughs> Big work? team, about, no? Yeah. You're ambitious. Yeah, I'm like, you know, if my own parents cannot understand what I'm passionate about, mm. you know, it's, this is not just about money, right? Like, you know, you do the videos every day that not just about money. Happiness, right? It's, it's exactly I mean, the, the fulfillment that you get when someone says, man, like today I, I was grabbing a coffee from Tim Modern's and the guy from Windows is, oh, you're Aditya, right? I oh saw my video God. yesterday. You yes. know, man, you're doing good job. Thank you. Congratulations. I'll, I'm like, someone at the window and saying, you know, I'm doing a good job. Like, so yes. there will be a handful of people will appreciate Definitely. your work yes. and will follow you. That's all matters for you. And what I felt is as you learn, do consistently, you're doing those 95% will be in your turn, in your favor. Yeah. They said, okay, you can't stop this guy. This guy, it's okay. I'll just follow it. It's okay. Or I forgot about it. Yeah. So I would say it's, it's just go ahead with that. Whatever you can do just, and, what I felt from my experience is when I saw, when I see somebody like very successful, I say, if this guy can do it, why not I can do it? If yeah. Mandeep can do it, Aditya can do it, why can't you do it? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, yeah. it's just taking that action. Love that, man. So let's, let's, so we got another seven minutes here. I know you're okay. busy. You got to sell more properties there and do a lot of videos. So <laughs> let me quickly jump on some questions here because people Definitely. have some really good questions. Up, yes. Along with, uh, lot of appreciations on you like you know a lot of uh, good words about you so let me 
Uh, Rahul Verma, can I fulfill the one percent rule of for rental properties? As of now, is it almost very rare to find a good affordable property? Can you produce re rental income according to one percent rule? So I would say uh, the possibility is there. There are two things you need to realize. If you are in uh, looking very close to GTA, for example, that's like it's like New York, right? Same yeah. as in GTA. Same. If you go to any downtown, the same will happen. The yeah. only thing is you might not be able to fulfill that cash flow thing. But you will be able to fulfill that appreciation. You need to create a balance here. The yeah. properties, irrespective of the market, if you are at that center, the powerhouse that is like, a, for example, Toronto, will be impacted less because of opportunities, immigrations, jobs, and all those things. But the peripheral properties, like 200, 300, 400 kilometers, will be impacted more. So it's it's a balance. Now, let's say you want really, really, you want to focus on the cash flow. Definitely, then you want to move out of GTA or you need to be very creative with the properties you are doing. Let's say even in GTA, you might try to do Airbnb, right? Something like that or like a duplex or people do like room rentals. We don't suggest that, but that's one way of doing it. Another way is just drive around 200 kilometers and see those communities where you see the net migration happening, where you see the transportation system, where you see college and universities, where you see the hospitals, Walmarts, Costco's, highways. Those are the signs that, okay, people are moving in. There are job opportunities. You need to grab those uh, properties and move in there. Definitely, you'll find those one person rules. I don't stick to any rules, but those properties will definitely cash flow. Those yeah, uh, numbers will make sense. Word, yeah. 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 You know, one percent is a BS in my opinion by yes, creator yeah. someone because you yes, know what if you have one percent, but the all one percent is expenses. You know, yes. you have baseboard heating, you are paying for utilities, you know, all those yes. things. Uh, I would I I'm a cash flow guy. Uh, I yes. even have a cash flow calculator. If anyone wants that calculator, <laughs> yes. let me know in the comments. I'll have my team to pin that uh, in the in the comments. But uh, yeah, I love the answer. You gotta hustle, you gotta drive, you gotta find out, and those uh, the stats you mentioned. Love that. Uh, honestly, yes. that's exactly what anyone who wants to get into those, like, is this city a good city for me or not? Yes. Are people moving in? More jobs, right? Shop, shopping malls, uh, colleges, and, you know, all those things. The metrics are really crucial. Yes. Yes. Um, Jitin, I have landed in Toronto in April, got a contract job 13 months in May. Uh, with a reputed MNC company, I have been able to buy my first property with 5% down in, oh, will I be able to buy my first property in next uh, five months? Maybe the same question. Yes, yeah. So it's similar. The only thing is we need to structure it a bit creatively because he's self-employed here. And some of the lenders will say we need the two-year history for that corporations because he's working on corporations, right? So definitely yeah. we can talk offline about that. So that's uh, definitely doable. Yeah, so that, that's what I was just about to ask. Like, you know, if someone, because, you know, um, you guys are really expert in GT area. Um, what's the best uh, contact number and email address or something that we uh, people can reach out to you and your team? Definitely, Aditya. Do you have like a, a yeah. note chair or something like? Yeah. Uh, so um, that... I'm gonna ask my assistant to put that. Uh, Amy, That'll I think you have a Mandip's contact info there. Uh, make sure to put. Uh, of course, we'll include the Instagram uh, links anyways. Um, but we'll we'll put it into the in the description. So check out the description. You'll you'll see them in there. Definitely. Thank you, Aditya. Perfect. And uh, let me see. Uh, there are a lot more questions. Let's see if I, I want to find something that was not asked. Can you okay. suggest about dip, diploma? No, I don't want to talk about that. Love working with the Desi. You know, is, is Desi is your last name or is it, <laughs> is it the name that you included just because you're Desi? Yeah, that's a good one, right? Some people like, you know, say Desi is the Desai, right? So they make oh, their own names. So yeah, that's your last that's, name? <laughs> No, that's uh, yeah. Our, uh, that's my uh, last time. Right? Nice. Casey, right? So it's I very close that, rela relating, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> cool. you know, for some reason, in the beginning, I thought it's your, it's it's the name you added, like has a yeah, intentional, right? Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. one, right? Maybe <laughs> SEO thing. That's what you say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. Um, Arsh added more. Oops, sorry. My team added your contact info there. Let me put that uh, again. One second. Amy put that. Uh, so, uh, guys, you can follow um, Mandip Desai. Des <laughs> uh, I don't want to butcher, man. Tell me. Yeah, how that's how it. It. It's Desi. Desi. Okay, perfect. Punjabi, right? So that's right. That's very smooth, right? So. Okay. 
So I'm calling it right then, Desi. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, you're, perfect. You're so that, right? There you go. You guys got the contact uh, website and uh, uh, email address and IG. So make sure to follow because, you know, a lot of good advice and a lot of uh, market updates also. I see like, you know, about real estate, uh, GTA, um, you know, construction and a lot of things. So let me quickly look at uh, one more quick question. So yes. great chat here. We got another quick question here. Uh, when each of you start with social media, was there a time when you were demotivated and you felt like quitting since so much of traction? Um, how did you handle with it? I want you to start with this. So definitely, I think uh, uh, in your life, you'll have those situations where you feel like quitting. So irrespective, whichever profession you are, whichever, uh, like even a doctor, even you're doing trucking or whatever it happens in your life. So, but it's uh, all about your motivation, which keeps you uh, like alive. Basically, it's your breathe. Once it like you are, you need that oxygen to breathe in. You can quit those things for some time, but then you'll come back to you. But the only thing which I felt was I had a very motivating environment. So I remember I was uh, sitting, uh, uh, not talking to you know, my wife. You know, she's always motivating. My family is always there. That's the first thing. Second thing, I was like, I had like very, like my network is very, I'm not, uh, I would say I don't have a big network here. Uh, like I'm, I don't mingle with so many people. It's like only like a very limited uh, people I have access to. So I was sitting with my lawyer, right? And he, he saw my video and he said, okay, you started with this, you are doing good. But then I explained the situation that there are a lot of people who was putting negative comments and all those things. They said like, oh, what this guy is doing? He don't know how to pronounce it. He don't know how to speak. <laughs> no, he should make videos in Punjabi, go back to India and all those things, right? Yeah. They, he, he explained to me, those people who are putting comments on you, once at one level, they'll be your the biggest fan. Remember, mm. I still remember those words. Now I can completely, I know, I relate to that. When I have new people coming to my channel, whatever, they put those negative comments and all those things. And I don't care. Even I don't read them. I don't have a time. Like, like literally, I say, I post the video. I don't watch my videos also. Like, is it like posted or not? I don't have that time. So I don't have time those for those negative uh, things who is uh, pulling you down. So it's like one time the phase will happen. But once you are beyond that, those things will sound irrelevant to you yeah that's that's what i would say i'll i'll just add on to that you know it, actually it um i i did face that you know even yes. like w once uh, this is like two three years ago um on one of my video on facebook like it's actually indian guy yes. um i don't remember the name um but pretty sure like he's a brown guy like indian um i don't know if he born and raised here or somewhere he uh, not a personal connection nothing just came from social media and this guy posts like, you guys have to go back to your country. You're bringing See? like, you know, so much negativity. And, and I'll be honest, like I was completely mm, demotivated. Like I was, I was mm. actually, what the fuck, you know, how, what, what did I do wrong? You know, I started mm. pushing myself and actually I have a very good friend. She's, uh, uh, she was my client at that point okay. and she's a white girl. She jumped on him like completely with a shoot of like explaining what do you think is this guy is doing like mm. he, what this guy did this 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 and he, it was a solid beneficial for and that was like after seeing that response I didn't I couldn't See even how... respond to that comment right yeah man thank God like someone is standing on my behalf mm. because you know if you do good like obviously it will take time to come back to you but it will come back mm. so you know those are the scenarios where and also like. One and a half year after into the business, like I, I started to get like so much business and I couldn't handle. Yes. And you know people expect you to call in the night time, and I I couldn't like my brain get fucked up after eight p.m. nine p.m. Yes. You know, I couldn't think properly, so I just put my phone in do not disturb mode. I respond after ten a.m. next day, and mm. that's what I started to do. And you know some people used to, you know, almost get so emotional. What do you mean? Like you're a realtor, you should answer anytime. So I'm human relatives being. have life, man. These are professionals. Yeah. So you work nine to five and you expect people to call you exactly. at 9 p.m. And you know, once in a while, uh, and that just became very normal for a for few mm. days, a few weeks. Uh, that's when like I found a good mentor and, you know, she was like yes. telling me, no, 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 calm down. You know, you just be strict on your times because that's yes. your time. And I'm working yes. 12 hours. You know, mm. call me in that freaking 12 hours. Don't Definitely. call me so, after this time. So when you stick to your guts, eventually that's fall in place. Like, you know, yeah, because we all have the low times, but we just need to yeah. find those, like you said, uh, 
right people you know yeah people it's only one you. person people we need we don't care about what those 90 yeah. percent people yeah. are doing to you so yeah yeah man. so good question I, I would say it's, yeah it's a good question yeah. right yeah very good question so yeah. and i know you know i i really enjoyed this chat i i think you know definitely i want to have you back again uh okay. because this, this, this is like you know more kind of similar background people you know coming with the same kind of struggles maybe in a different forms um we, we so we can talk a lot but uh, guys whoever joined thank you so much uh, for you know being very natural act uh, constantly engaging and asking your questions and keep those questions coming in on my channel and on this is channel go check out his instagram um, and if you need any help in gt i know you know i don't know any best uh, person than you so reach out to him uh, Mandeep, thank you so much, brother. Thanks. Definitely. It's a much a pleasure and it's like a very, you know, uh, entertaining, educating, I would say, you know, uh, talking to you and such a nice conversation, such a nice audience you have and would love to repeat this. Maybe we'll try, you know, Instagram live next time. Oh, yeah. It's, very, to, yeah. It's, it's, it's very motivating, you know, having those discussions. And yeah. we have so many things to talk about, I know, right? And a lot of people yeah. have those questions. They have uh, that mindset and they, they just need that action, that motivation. Uh, just, it's just taking the dive. That's it. That's yeah, what they just need. that little push. Yeah. So that's I know, yeah, So we'll definitely you know catch up on the Instagram. I, I would love to. Uh, let me know when you're you know when you would like to do. Uh, the yes. Instagram is now you know your audience can see my audience can see that would be even. And that'll be good. Uh, right? So yeah, it's more fun. Good. Let's plan it out right some uh, offline and then we can discuss sure. more about it right. Thanks, Sounds thanks, Ritya, and thanks the whole team. You know, uh, bringing this all together. Thank you. Yeah, and no, it's you all so because of your actions. We are here. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. So take okay. some actions. You will get close to your freedom, financial okay. freedom life that you want. So. Okay. Namaskara. <laughs> Thank you.